Hi, I'm Brian Sparks, Senior Editor of Greenhouse Grower. Welcome to our Shop Talk Tech Tip series on greenhousegrower.com. This month, we are talking with disease experts to learn more about the most challenging greenhouse pathogens, how growers can identify them, and best practices for controlling them. We recently sat down with Mark Brotherton at CPRO to talk about Botrytis. Here's what he had to say. Botrytis is probably one of the, the top, if not the most economically important disease for uh, greenhouse growers. It is, it is certainly the most common one faced in the industry. And uh, part of that reason is because it thrives in growing conditions that we often try to provide in you know, growing greenhouse plants. With that, it has very wide host range. So anything from annuals to perennials to even woody crops, and then of course, uh, vegetables as well. And then particularly it favors crops with denser canopies as well. It will host or infect all stages of plant production. Uh, I mean, it particularly targets, I guess you'll say the new growth or the senescing or older dying growth, but you'll see it, you know, in all parts of the plant. And so uh, with that, it can lead to, or could present itself, I'll say, in many different forms as a leaf blight, um, as a flower blight, so cankers, damping off, fruit rots. So there's a, many different ways it can present itself. And with that, it's, it's very easily spread. So spreading through air currents and splashing or water movement. Uh, so very easily spread from plant to plant in a, you know, a high density production setting. Because of its rapid reproduction and development, it is a little bit more susceptible to resistance development relative to some other diseases we deal with at the greenhouse. So it's just got a lot of things going for it that makes it a, a very tough and, and challenging disease to manage in a greenhouse. The fortunate part with Botrytis is it's, you know, it's pretty predictable. So if, uh, based on environmental conditions. So if you have uh, high humidity, generally 80, 80, 85% or greater, uh, you know, uh, temperatures between 55 and 75, although probably closer to the 60 to 75 degree range. And then you have uh, leaf wetness or extended periods of leaf wetness. It, you know, that's basically a breeding ground for botrytis. And you can really expect to see some, some disease development under those conditions. You know, the fortunate part is it's easily visible. So if you do get infection, you'll often see like fuzzy gray masses, cottony looking masses on uh, the plant tissue. Sometimes it can even be white or brown, uh, but generally gray psyllium that will develop throughout the plant and even on some uh, senesce leaves at the, at the soil surface. Remove all debris entirely from the greenhouse, not just put it in a compost bin or trash can off in the corner, but remove it entirely from the greenhouse because again, it, it, it favors the old and decaying plant tissue as a host. And then of course you can, to improve or to limit the amount of leaf wetness uh, over, overhead irrigation and especially in, in propagation, uh, do your best to improve airflow, whether that's through, you know, ventilation, if that's possible within the greenhouse or even, you know, overhead fans that are, you know, simply moving air within the greenhouse to, to reduce that leaf wetness. Outside of doing everything we can to prevent botrytis, you know, culturally, you know, inevitably we're going to get disease infection uh, at some point. But when we do, it's critical to rotate fungicide classes, rotate your frac groups uh, in each application. So your typical recommendation is three to four unique frac groups in a rotation as you manage botrytis. Recommended that uh, you use at least three, if not four different uh, modes of action in your chemical rotation. So a, a couple of good products or, or good classes that come to mind uh, that are highly effective on botrytis, it would be uh, chlorothalonil with a frac coat of M5. You know, that one you probably want to use a little bit earlier on in production as it potentially could leave some residue. Phenhexamid or Decree, which is a frac group seven in a unique group of its own, is another great rotation product. And then often are in combination with, you know, the strobulins or 7-Eleven combos as they're commonly known as, uh, such as uh, a pageant or broad form or orchestra, for example. You know, and then lastly, frac group 12 containing flutioxanil or medallion is another go-to standard when building a botrytis rotation program.
I think the, the most important thing is really to have and build a, a solid IPM program. Uh, you know, that includes some of the cultural practices and environmental conditions that we talked about earlier, but uh, also scouting. If you are able to scout early, often, you'll lead to an early detection and it will at that point be easier to manage. And if once you catch it earlier, you can manage it before it becomes widespread and that'll lead to less crop damage, crop delay, or even crop loss entirely.